Today I come here with a heavy heart for all those that have given their lives, not only those, but their families, their friends, everyone. And especially for a friend of mine who passed away yesterday, Bob Spence, he was in the Australian Army, served many years, came to America, became a citizen, lived here in Norwalk, and worked for Pico Rivera and for the county. We're going to miss you very much. Welcome and good morning, everyone. City Council and I are honored to join active service and retired military families and friends as we pray, pay tribute to our fallen soldiers. Today we are taking the time to reflect on all that we have because of all that our servicemen and women have bravely given. Today we're honoring our heroes. I'd like to start by thanking our local veterans groups, American Legion Post 359, the Sons of the American Legion, and the Ladies Auxiliary, who are instrumental in making this event happen every year. Now I'd like to introduce my colleagues, Vice Mayor Lena Shryock, <laughs> Council Member Tony Ayala, <laughs> Jennifer Perez, <laughs> and Margarita Rios. Also join us in our city manager, Mike Egan. We also have some special guests sharing the morning with us. I believe they're here, I didn't see them yet, but if not, we'll just introduce them anyway. They'll be here later then. Senator Tony Mendoza. <laughs> Assembly member Ian Calderon. <laughs> Assembly member Christina Garcia. Also joining us today are former council members Bob Arthur, <laughs> Sherry Kelly, <laughs> Mike Mendez, <laughs> and if he's here, Marcel Rodarte. <laughs> and Gordon Stefanhagen. Thank you all for joining us. And I'd also like to introduce, uh, if they're here, the Norwalk La Mirada Unified School Board. Is anyone here from the uh, Norwalk La Mirada School Board? Let's give them a hand anyway. <laughs> also, Little Lake City School District. I know I've seen a couple of members here. Thank you. At this time, I'll ask everyone to stand for presentation of colors by the American Legion Combined Color Guard. There's our vintage American color.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Your other left. I think we just witnessed our uh, vintage military aircraft flyover. The AT-6 trainers, you're, you've seen already, fly over well, twice, nicknamed the pilot makers. These aircraft were used extensively from the 30s through the 50s by the US Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps. Here they come again. They were also used by the Royal and Royal Canadian Air Force in combat flight training during World War II and the Korean War. Their formation serves as a tribute to the million, millions of men and women who have served and are currently serving in the United States military and pays homage to the dedication and sacrifices of those who helped pioneer the skies. 
Well, they flew over three times. The beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Next, we'll have invocation by Bradley Shoup, Sons of the American Legion. Please remain standing for the POW MIA ceremony. On cover. Join me in a prayer, please. God, we thank you for everything you've blessed us with. Be with all those who had gave the ultimate price for our country. Amen. Let's give a hand to the All City Band directed by Frank Hinos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, about three years ago, City Council and I expressed a desire to commission a public art piece that would honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country. We knew that in order to effectively convey the gravity and significance of our message, it needed to be unique, well thought out, and momentous. Our Art and Public Places Committee recommended a project with a custom walkway surrounded by five 11 foot tall monuments. Granite etchings installed on these monuments tell the stories of soldiers in each branch of the armed forces. During the battles and peacetime throughout our history, I'd like to bring up Art and Public Places Committee Chairman Joseph Yakovic to introduce some folks responsible for the bringing of our idea to life. Joseph, could you come forward, please? In 2012, I was appointed to serve on the Arts Placement Commission for the City of Norwalk. Since then, I have attended monthly meetings here at the City Hall, passing what was then Freedom Square. The square was a standalone design, and frankly, it had seen better days. But it inspired a dream. I wanted to see a memorial, see this memorial as an extension of this building. I was really taken by the architectural design, and I envisioned the black windows being represented as black granite with etchings on them of of our military service members, and also use, using the vintage tiles that are in there. So I was moved to action. And as a professional artist and designer, I meet artists all over the world, and my design idea brought to mind Nan Beckstrom, especially impressive granite pieces that she did for Long Beach. Nan liked my ideas and made a formal presentation for the commission and to the city council. Everyone loved the ideas presented. Um, if you read the insert in your program, you'll see the in depth, the depth that she took in researching this piece and making it really much more than I could even envision. So three and a half years later, my vision is now a reality and I am thankful for this opportunity to serve my community. I am thankful to you, Nan, for bringing my vision to life for the intense research and deep meaning behind each of your design elements and for the labor of love you have given us. I am thankful to the Arts Placement Commission of the City Council and Mayor of the City of Norwalk for believing in this idea and bringing it to fruition. But most of all, I am thankful to all of you for joining us today as we dedicate this memorial to honor the brave men and women who have served our country in peace and in war. Their sacrifice will always be remembered. Thank you. We'd also thank architect Randy Meyer of Meyer and Associates. as well as Don and Tiffany Trenholm, Ryan McGillan, and Joe Curley of Act One Construction. For integrating artwork and functionally in this project, which also includes a brand new city hall entrance and ADA ramp. That's been needed for years. Finally, we'd like to recognize Sherry Kelly, Mike Mendez, and Marcel Rodardi who served on the council when we broke ground here in this spot two years ago. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> now,
Now I invite City Council to join me as we unveil the Freedom Memorial and introduce Norwalk's newest public art installation. Council, take your places. One, two, buckle your shoe. <laughs> What a fitting tribute on this very important and meaningful day of remembrance. Let's pause and say a prayer to ourselves and to God. Hmm. And then we'll go to uh, American Legion Post 359 supports our local veterans and their families and helps make our ceremony possible. I'm going to ask the president of the Ladies Auxiliary, Becky Bullard, to introduce three Post 359 service groups. Becky? Those who have, who have served and those currently serving the United States as members of the uniformed services, as civil services, and of contractors are ever mindful of the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who may have endured and may still be enduring the agony, agonies of pain, deprivation, and internment. Let us take a moment to recognize our POWs and MIAs. We call your attention to this small table, which occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one, symbolizing the fact that they are missing from our ranks. They are referred to as POWs and MIAs. We call them comrades. They are unable to be there, be with their loved ones and families today. So we join together to pay a humble tribute to them and bear witness to their continued absence. The table, except for one, is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her suppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms. The single red rose in the vase signifies the blood that they have shed and sacrificed to ensure the freedoms of our beloved United States of America. This rose also reminds us of the family and friends of our missing comrades who keep the faith while waiting their return. The yellow ribbon on the vase represents the yellow ribbon worn on the lapels of thousands who demand with unyielding determination a proper accounting of our comrades who are not among us today. A slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of their bitter fate. The salts sprinkled on the plate reminds us of the countless volunteers of families as they wait. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us at this time. The chair is empty. They are not here. The candle is reminiscent of the light of hope, which light lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors to the open arms of a grateful nation. Let us pray to the Supreme Commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks. Let us ever remember and never forget their sacrifices. May God for watch over them and protect them and their families. Good morning, honored veterans, ladies and gentlemen, city council, and honored guests. My name is Becky Bullard, and I'm the president of the Ladies Auxiliary, and I would first like to introduce our joint color guard to you. The Legion is Captain, Captain is Larry Fior, and he's with the Navy. Drill instructor back here is Frankie de Guzman from the Air Force. Melissa Bravko is from the Army. David Ramirez and Al Andrian and Floyd White. Auxiliary, the Captain is Francis Powell. 
Crystal Roma Reyes, Lupi and Aya, and we have another guest in the audience, which is Dolores Scoop. Juniors are Desiree Alvarado, Caitlin White. Our little poppy girl in the red dress is Mia Medina, Miranda Medina, Frank, Gracie Franco, Jocelyn Guerrero, Bri Brianna Manley, and Janine Gonzalez. Today is a day of reflection and remembering what men and women we have lost in the service of our country. Some gave everything at the time of service, making the ultimate sacrifice. Many of our veterans came back and continued to serve our country in other ways through the fire department and police departments and various service organizations such as we are. We also have those that are unaccounted for and they're still trying to make peace for the POWs and MIAs. Freedom will never be free. We should never forget what our veterans have done for us and we should be eternally grateful for their service. So wear your poppy, the little girls have been passing out, proudly for those that have served and have passed. And don't forget to thank a veteran for their service, no matter where you find them. Could I have all the American Legion and the VFW's families please stand? Come on, ladies, I know you're out there. VFW? These are the ladies and gentlemen who serve your communities and their veterans. I have a poem today that I'd like to read that I found that I thought was rather fitting. It's called, Unless You've Been a Soldier, by Clive Sanders. Unless you've been a soldier, you just won't understand. The things that we have seen and done and sacrifice of our land. We've trained to live in combat, to cope with awful sights that shouldn't be seen by anyone and keep you awake at nights. We don't discuss the wounds we have to the body or the mind. We just put our hurts behind us and turn our memories to blind. We are proud to serve our country and remember those we lost. For the freedom that you have today, they paid an awful cost. Thank you. Before we hear from our keynote speaker, the All City Band will perform the service medley as we recognize all branches of the armed forces. Veterans, please stand when you hear your branches theme song. All City Band play will play the medley. Thank you to the All City Band.
Today I have the distinct honor of introducing a man whose work has impacted the lives of veterans throughout our country. Together with his wife, Terry, John B. Kelsall has created a program that honors the life of his son, a decorated naval officer. Lieutenant Commander Jonas B. Kelsall, one of the first members of the SEAL Team 7. Killed in action in Afghanistan in 2011, and John and his and Terry keep his memory, his commitment to service, and commitment to his fellow soldiers alive throughout the Jonas program. The Kelsall's work and dedication have earned them numerous awards, including the President's Lifetime Achievement Award. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. John P. Kelsall. John. First of all, I want to say it's an honor and a privilege for my wife, Terry, and me to be here with you today to remember the incredible men and women who have protected our freedoms with their lives. And it's an honor to be here to the unveiling of this magnificent freedom wall. Kudos to the city of Norwalk and Ms. Butler Barton for this beautiful, beautiful tribute. Thank you. You see, by our just being here today, our ability to come together to be free to speak our minds, to celebrate something as wonderful as this together, demonstrates just how huge the list of freedoms we enjoy every day really is. But how many of us, how many of us remember how and at what sacrifice that beautiful gift is given to each of us? Or do we just take it for granted? How many remembered when you got up this morning to say a little thank you in appreciation? I had the freedom to wake up in my own bed this morning, in my own home. I had the freedom to go to a school and study what I wanted and choose my own career path. I had the freedom this morning to decide how I was going to spend my gift of today. I chose to come here and be with all of you, and I have the freedom to do just that. Memorial Day is one of those wonderful three-day weekends that everybody looks forward to. It's an extra day off from work, a reason to picnic with friends and family, shop the great discounts at so many different stores. It's generally considered the kickoff to summer. And who doesn't love the feeling of freedom and renewal that comes with summer? I used to think the same way every Memorial Day weekend. I used to relish in the thought of spending extra time with my wife and children, playing outside or planning a fun adventure. I didn't fully appreciate what this weekend is really all about until I was forced to. You see, the morning of August 6, 2011, my wife, Terry, and I received a phone call from our daughter-in-law at 6 a.m. that a Chinook helicopter was shot down in Afghanistan. There were no survivors. We lost 31 heroes that day. Lieutenant Commander Jonas B. Kelsall, U.S. Navy SEAL, Gold Team Commander, was on that aircraft. Jonas is our son. It was the worst Navy SEAL disaster in, in history, and that moment changed our lives forever. Our wonderful Jonas was gone. We would not be able to hug him again or call him on the phone or hear his infectious laugh or hear about his latest exploits. That book now had its final chapter. And that was the moment I understood. I was now one of those people who really understood Memorial Day. Not only as the start of the summer season, but also as a moment to stop and to reflect and what it means to be free. I can vividly remember Jonas's whiskers on my cheek as we hugged before his last deployment. And he said, Dad, if anything happens to me, know that I'm doing what I love with the guys I love doing it with, and I wouldn't want to do anything else. Those are powerful words. He was happy. He felt that serving his country was an honor and every day had purpose for him. It sounds cliche, but freedom does have a price. How many here, by show of hands, has a relative, a friend, or knows of someone who gave the ultimate, ultimate sacrifice in service to our country? How many? Look around. That is the price of freedom. Sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, husbands, wives. That is the price of freedom, each of their lives. A life that will be missed every single day for the rest of our days. I'm reminded of something important Jonas told us. He said that he wanted us to be happy should anything happen. That was his wish, to be happy. 
I would guess for those of you who have also lost a loved one, they would probably make the same wish for you. You will carry the burden of our freedom with you for the remainder of your life, but don't let that burden prevent you from taking advantage of every precious moment they fought so hard for you to have and to enjoy to the maximum. So I challenge you with a Latin phrase, aude aliquid dignum. It means dare something worthy. They did. This memorial wall makes us incredibly proud to be an American. Regardless of ethnic origins, color of our skin, language we speak, or way we worship God. So we must make them proud by remembering them. Remembering what they have done for us and for us to do something worthy with our lives using the beautiful gift they gave us. They fought for one United States of America. So Memorial Day has taken on a very new meaning for Terry and me and so many other like us. We pause like we do most days to think of our son, to thank him for what all that he's done and given us and for so selflessly going into battle because he knew it was the right thing to do. And we pause to remember all the men and women who did the same. We pause to remember their families and how this weekend isn't just a fun-loving weekend it once was for them because we were reminded of the high cost of freedom. But go ahead, enjoy this holiday to the maximum. Be happy, for that is what they fought and died for. But also pause to be grateful, so say thank you and remember. Take a moment this weekend to remember what it means to be an American. It's more than skin color, language, religion, political or sexual preference. They fought for one. United States of America. Not your United States, not my United States, but the United States of America. It is our obligation to live in accordance with the values they fought so hard to uphold and protect for us. Today is Kennedy's 100th birthday. His saying, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Imagine what we might accomplish if we work together as one cohesive team, as our military does so magnificently within their units. May I ask every veteran who is here today to please stand and be recognized and remain standing. May I ask any active duty military that we have here to please join us and stand. Any active duty. And lastly, may I ask any gold star moms or dads to please stand and join us. Thank you. Take a look around, my friends. These men and women here today and those named on this wall and so many others um, where, where are so many everyday freedoms come from, let us never forget that. After this ceremony, please seek out these veterans and service members and with a sincere handshake, say thank you for whatever freedom you enjoy. To all you veterans and active duty personnel and Gold Star moms and dads, may I say thank you for your service, for your sacrifice, and for your commitment to our country. You make us very proud. You are the 1%, the enormous 1% that protects the 99%. You have done and continue to do what most either can't or won't. Thank you. Thank you for your service. So back to audioloquid dignum, dare something worthy. On this Memorial Day, I dare you. I dare you to do something great in remembrance of them. I dare you to appreciate and enjoy your freedoms. I dare you to be happy, to really embrace the privileges and gifts set before you that are freely given to you. They didn't just die to defend our freedom, freedoms. They lived with the intent of achieving the American dream, the dream of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So today, I dare you to be happy. I dare you to say and really mean thank you. I dare you to do something great to honor their sacrifice and for you to feel the pride in doing it. 
I leave you with this quote from General George S. Patton. It is foolish to mourn the men who died. Rather, we should thank God such men lived. Thank you. God bless our veterans, our military, and the United States of America. Thank you very much for your memorable and inspiring message, John. We thank you and your wife for the wonderful opportunities you provide to the men and women who serve in the United States military. Now I'll ask Wayne Kerrigan, who'll be joined by Elpidio Andranian, back to the podium for uh, Post Everlasting. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to honor those that passed away at our post this past year. Due to some circumstances, I don't have a list this year. So I'm gonna honor them all, and we had several, with the ringing of a bell, and a short prayer. Can all of you please rise and please uncover. Oh God, of all our yesterdays and our todays, and our tomorrows, we pause here together in the quietness of the remembrance to linger for a moment in thought over those comrades of yesterday whose names rung out in our hearing as those are now transferred from our ranks to post everlasting. Short months ago or weeks or days, they stood before us. We laughed with them and labored, lived out a portion of our lives in common cause. Each of them contributed in some fashion, large or small, to what we battle like most of us, less nobly perhaps than they could have, but better than they might, and we might have been untouched by what they did and were. In such a moment as this, we are keenly aware of our own everlasting presence and our only remaining league with those of our former comrades. We salute you and commend them to you with trust and expectation. Whatever battle stars or ribbons they may have deservedly won, perhaps unknown to us on the battlefields of life, you will award. May they stand before you now as before a beloved captain in an eager readiness for whatever yet might be. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. If, if we could have the uh, placing of the wreath by the American Legion officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment to honor and remember those who laid down their lives for us as we observe the rifle volley by the California Army Corps <clears throat> and also a National Guard. And please, and followed by taps, please remember it's gonna be loud, so cover your ears for those that are, have sensitive ears. Before we uh, leave today, Frankie de Guzman, Sergeant Frankie de Guzman, would like to make a presentation to World War II veteran, John Barnsalow. Good morning. Good morning, veterans of all campaigns, ladies, gentlemen, and distinguishing members. 
Today is a day to honor and remember the selflessness of country and service to this nation. To those who are here today and to those who never made it back home, we honor your sacrifice. Today we honor a World War II veteran who served under General George S. Patton in the Battle of the Bulge with the 3rd Army Regiment. This young man landed on Omaha Beach and made it through one of the most difficult landings anyone has ever seen or heard. While moving through Belgium, this young man was shot. He received the bronze medal and the purple heart. Everyone, since you're standing, please welcome John Johnny Barcelo, better known to his family as Uncle Sam. Please uncover. Join me in a prayer, please. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for letting us all join here today and be with those who gave the ultimate for our country. Let's have a moment of silence for those who have passed away. Amen. You know, I'm reminded of a lot of things to be thankful for. The reason this country was founded was for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those that came before us were all immigrants who built this nation, along with the Indians that were already here, who were the true Americans. I want to pay homage not only to our veterans who have sacrificed a lot, but to law enforcement who's under attack every day these days. The firemen, the sheriffs, the police, public safety. We must remember them. We must also be vigilant in our daily lives to look out for the things that are not normal that are going on. And in doing so, we honor the memory of those that have fallen in the battles across the world. And I do mean across the world. For those men and women are not just fighting over there to fight, they're fighting for our freedoms and their freedoms. They don't know how to appreciate it, but we do. And we will continue to honor their memory and their sacrifice. And to those that are serving today, we honor them 
with our prayers and our help and our thanks for all of them and for all of us one country under God for without him we wouldn't even be here so God bless you all God bless the United States of America after our ceremony if our veterans come forward can come forward we'll have a group photo Take it to remember today's observance. And now we'll have, uh, I guess, the benediction of, we've already had that. Huh. Uh, you can tell I'm nervous. <laughs> I really don't like talking. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, the city of Norwalk is home to over 3,400 veterans. And we are very thankful and supportive of these residents, as well as those who are no longer with us. We ask that you join us in showing support for the sacrifice they make daily, overseas and here at home. Take a light bulb, available free at our check-in table, a green light bulb for a veteran. By replacing the one visible light in our home with a green one, you show your support for veterans countrywide, worldwide. Again, thank you all for joining us on this very special day. Without the sacrifice of those in service, we would not be able to enjoy our freedoms. Thank you very much. God bless you all again. God bless the United States of America. <laughs>